Hi, and welcome. My name is Alicia Roberts. I'm a prenatal, postpartum, and pelvic floor physical therapist. I've been working with this population for over a decade. I am also a mom of two, so I have been through pregnancy and birth myself. So you are here to learn how to reconnect and to strengthen your core muscles after pregnancy and birth. This is appropriate no matter which way your baby or babies came out of you and no matter how long ago or how many babies you have had. So first thing we're going to do is talk about what muscles were affected in pregnancy and birth. And then we're going to talk about how to reconnect your brain to those muscles so that you can start getting strong and feeling good again. So the first muscle group that we are going to talk about is the pelvic floor. Even if you had a C-section, the pelvic floor muscles still need some attention. So here is a picture of them, and then I'm going to show you them on my model. So the pelvic floor is made up of many, many muscles. We divide them into three different layers of tissue. So this is a crotch shot up of the pelvic floor. This is the urethra, the vaginal opening, and the anal opening. This is the perineum. And then you can look down into the pelvic floor and really see how it is the floor of our body. Okay, so here's your orientation. So the first two layers of the pelvic floor do the exact same thing. They're the muscles that wrap around the urethra and the vaginal opening and then also the anal opening. This muscle comes out and closes the urethra from the top. So you can think of these as your squeezers. They squeeze to stop you from passing gas, hold in your stool, keep you dry, and then they're supposed to relax and open when it's time to let out those bodily fluids. So this is layers one and two. Layer three is the deeper layer in the pelvic bowl. This layer does not have any sphincters. This layer's job is to draw up and hold everything up. So in a vaginal birth, this muscle layer gets very, very stretched out. So this layer holds everything up, stabilizes our bones, okay? So I want you to have that orientation of the pelvic floor when we go into that. Brief little thing, if you did have a C-section, one, if you went through pushing, then especially your third layer likely had some effects because baby was pushing into the third layer. If you did not go through any pushing, even with a scheduled C-section, the pelvic floor is right there. So the incision for your C-section is right here, right above the pelvic floor. And so all of the yanking and pulling that happens during a cesarean birth can still affect the pelvic floor. So it's important to not just pass by this information about the pelvic floor, okay? So we'll talk about the functions again. holds up our organs, especially right now, postpartum, this, this muscle layer is working really, really hard to hold everything up. And it might be why you are feeling some heaviness holds in urine, gas, and stool, stabilizes the pelvic bones. Very, very important postpartum because everything was just opened up during pregnancy and in a vaginal birth, all those bones are spread open. So the pelvic floor's job is to pull them back together. Therefore, it is the foundation for all other muscles that attach to the pelvis and for sex. These muscles have to be able to be stretched open in order for penetration. They need to be able to be strong enough to be active so they can feel friction and an orgasm is produced by pelvic floor muscles. So what happens to the pelvic floor, it can get weakened in pregnancy just because it is holding up so much weight at the end of pregnancy. During a vaginal birth, it is stretched, it might be torn, it might be cut during a vaginal birth. Long pushing phases may increase the risk of pelvic floor dysfunction. So I wanna show you that on the model really, really quickly. So lo the longer and longer you are pushing, especially this third layer is being opened and opened and opened and just being stay just staying there in that stretched out position. Imagine if your hamstring got pulled and pulled and pulled and was just there for hours and hours and hours. We would expect there to be some dysfunction to that muscle after. Okay. Tearing happens during or where tearing happens is right here in the perineum. So this is the muscle layer that gets torn layer one or sorry, level one tear skin only level two perineum into the muscle layer level three into the anal sphincter level four through the anal mucosa. So if you had a level two or more tear, you tore through muscle. Very important to rehab muscle that's been torn and stitched, okay? 
So the so stretching and trauma to these muscles, even in the most gentle of births, these muscles still have tissue trauma. This leads to the brain not being able to engage the muscles anymore. So what we do in postpartum rehab is getting the brain to reconnect to the muscles. Only doing Kegels is not the answer for a couple reasons. The first reason is if you're doing Kegels, you're just sitting here squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. That's not how the pelvic floor works. It needs to work with your breath. When you get up, when you pick up your baby, when you walk up the stairs, when you cough, when you do things. So we have to move on from Kegels very, very quickly. And most people are doing Kegels wrong. We're going to talk about that and you're going to learn the right way to engage your pelvic floor in this video. So the pelvic floor is just like any other muscle. It must be able to fully contract. It must be able to fully relax. It is dysfunctional when it can't go through the full range of mo motion. So this woman here who's doing a bicep curl, imagine if she was only doing bicep curls up at the top or only doing bicep curls down at the bottom. That would not be effective muscle. The pelvic floor has the exact same muscle physiology. Okay, let's move up to the abdominals. Everyone is going to want to know about the abdominals. This is the deepest abdominal layer called the transversus abdominis. So if you take off your six pack and your obliques, you are left with this corset type muscle that wraps all the way around you. It stabilizes the pelvis. It draws your abdomen in. So for everybody looking for exercises to pull in their belly, it has to be transversus abdominis exercises. It does not move the body. So the transversus does not move the body. It does not do a sit up. It does not do a crunch. It does not do a twist. It needs to be able to engage without movement of the spine. Obviously, I think we can all appreciate how much this muscle gets stretched during pregnancy. If you see that connective tissue up the middle, that white line here, that is connective tissue that we all have. It connects the left side and the right side of our belly. So we all have connective tissue up the middle here. During a cesarean, this is cut. So from the pubic bone up a couple inches, that's where they get into the muscle and they spread the muscle apart. So they do cut through the connective tissue, not the muscle itself. So to engage your core, you have to do this correctly. And one of the number one things that I see in my postpartum patients in the clinic, whether they are six weeks postpartum or 16 years postpartum, the number one thing that I see is that they don't know how to engage their core correctly. It doesn't matter what exercise you are doing. It could be the best exercise that you find on the internet for a diastasis or for your mommy abdominals. If you don't know how to engage, it will not work. And that's the number one I see, number one thing I see. This is the neurological control for your brain to find these muscles again. And that's exactly what you were going to learn in this video. So you know how to engage your muscles correctly. So the foundational strategy that we are going to practice is that when you inhale, that's when you should be relaxing your belly and your pelvic floor. And when you exhale, that's when you should be engaging your muscles. So we are going to practice this together. This is the foundation of every single exercise that I teach and every single exercise that you should be doing out there that is labeled core. Okay, so here we go. Do this with me. Have a seat. Make sure your bladder is empty. Follow along. On inhale, inhale and relax your belly. Let your belly hang out. On inhale, relax your belly and drop and soften your pelvic floor like you were going to let a tampon or an egg drop out of you. On exhale, blow your air out, squeeze your sphincters, pull up like you're pulling up a tampon or picking up a marble, and then draw your belly in. On inhale, relax your belly, relax your pelvic floor down onto the chair. On exhale, squeeze your sphincters, draw your pelvic floor up, and then pull your belly in towards your spine. I'm going to show you this on my body, okay? So I'm going to turn sideways here. So on inhale, relax your belly on and your pelvic floor. On exhale, squeeze, lift your pelvic floor, and then draw your belly in 
away from your pants on an exhale. On inhale, drop your belly, drop your pelvic floor. On exhale, squeeze and lift the pelvic floor and then draw the belly in. I'm gonna show you one more time. On inhale, relax, drop, melt down. On exhale, squeeze and lift your pelvic floor and draw your belly in without moving your spine at all. This is the foundational strategy to getting your brain to reconnect with your muscles. It's okay if this doesn't feel normal. It's okay if this feels backwards. This is a strategy you need to learn. And until this feels smooth and until this feels more normal, you are not appropriate to do any other type of exercise. So you need to start with this. So my recommendation is that you practice this multiple times a week for a, you know, a couple minutes each, or if you are nursing or feeding a baby, practice it when you are also doing that. So I want to talk to you about my postpartum rehab course. You are going to take this strategy and learn it again in multiple different positions. And then we are going to move on. So I used to teach this course in person, and now I have it online for people to get physical therapy exercises from the comfort of your own home. So what are we going to do in this course? First of all, we're going to dive deep into what a diastasis is how to screen for it, how to know when it's actually really time to worry about it and when it's not. Let me tell you, a lot of times people think it's something to worry about and it's not. So we are going to dive down into what and how a diastasis is. We're going to go over some pelvic floor dysfunction screening. How do you know what's normal and what's not? I'm going to teach you that. And then you have four weeks of progressive exercises. Every week, the exercises get a little bit harder. We start using bands. We start using movement. Every week, you are going to get a video of the exercise and a handout. So depending on how you like to learn, but you're going to go through the exercises with me in one of the videos, and then you can continue to do it on the video or just use the handout. So you get a handout and a video. Every week, the exercises get harder. I also talk about some tips for accountability and how to get the most out of this program. So the goal being by the end of the four weeks, you have laid down the foundation that you need to start to fully heal your core and get your core stronger. Your core will not get stronger until your brain knows how to activate it. So this is the way to do it. I'm a mom of two. I totally get it. So that's why the exercises are never over 12 minutes. I think actually some of them are only eight minutes long, bite size chunks for you to do it. And this is how you get it done in bite size chunks. Let's take the guesswork out of postpartum healing. Let's take the guesswork out of postpartum exercise and fitness. This program is designed to be the stepping stone between either getting discharged from your doctor and returning to exercise, or maybe you're 16 years postpartum and you've never done any deep core work, or maybe you're back to doing exercise and you're having symptoms such as leaking and heaviness and pain. Your back hurts. You feel like your belly isn't changing. Your belly isn't being drawn in. This is still appropriate for you. If you've never done deep postpartum core work, this is the program for you, taught by me, a postpartum physical therapist expert in the field. Okay, so let's take the guesswork out. I hope to see you over there. I hope to support you on your journey back into your body. Let's reclaim your body and your strength because when we feel good, we can support everyone else around us. All right, thanks and I'll see you there.